What is up everybody? We are gonna be talking about mesh gradients, all right? So it's a great way for you to add texture to a background behind text and perhaps illustrations or pictures. And instead of just having a solid background color or a linear or radial gradient, you can have a mesh background color. So I'm gonna be showing you a great free tool for uh, Figma that will allow you to quickly and easily create these mesh gradients and then just hit generate and there you go it's ready to rock I also talk about colors and trying to how to you know make these uh, gradients work well together and yeah let's get ready to rock now just wait one hot freaking minute if you're interested in UI design in general and maybe you're not very good especially at gradients or colors or anything like that you should definitely check out my UI design bootcamp at scrimba.com at scrimba you don't just watch videos no 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 you're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn my course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. That's right. All you have to do is click on the very top link here in the YouTube description, and you'll get access to my UI design bootcamp, along with many other courses for a low monthly fee. Let's get to it. All right. As you can see, I already have a bit of a layout going on here. And of course, this is not a mesh gradient. This is a solid background. So the first thing you want to do to get started is we want to go to plugins and then browse plugins in community and then you're going to do a search mesh gradient ha ha great grady i ten i can't spell i just woke up all right plugins and then you'll find it right here you click on installed or install rather and come back refresh your project and it'll be right here so now you don't have to select any type of object. We first just have to right click anywhere in the canvas and go to plugins and choose mesh gradient right here. All right, so for the mesh gradient, you have a few options at the bottom which should talk, but the most important of course is going to be choosing a gradient and colors that work well together. Also the position of these little circular anchor points. Now, just to show you how this works really quickly, uh, to generate it and actually get it onto your layout, we choose, we probably want to choose 2x because you want a large enough size, uh, assuming you want a sort of like a full background. Uh, so if we choose 2x, it's going to generate a element here that is consistent with what we see in this little preview. Then at that point, we could just take it here, we can right click or we just delete this one in the back and we can position it into place and oops that thing has to be out of the way first let's get it there there we go and then we'll move this over position it and there you go it is that simple uh, to show you another trick in terms of positioning the actual gradient itself we come over here we choose image and then we choose fill make sure we choose crop and then you can have a more finite control over how your gradient, your mesh gradient rather, is positioned within the context of this container. So let's look at uh, some other options. I wanna show you, uh, this the one that starts by default, this is already pretty good looking, but again, this is all about choosing colors that work well in the context of a mesh gradient. So there's some cool things that you can do here. You can randomize this pattern right away. You know what would be really cool is if you were able to select uh, like an, an element and it would just show it wherever you have. Maybe that's uh, some feedback for the developers of this. Um, but we could just keep, oops, not generate rather. We just click, keep on clicking randomize and it's just gonna randomize uh, different colors and the positions of these anchor points. And so it could kind of give you a starting point uh, based on just the overall flow uh, of these anchor points and what it's creating in terms of this mesh gradient. So I kind of like this one. Uh, actually, no, I don't. Let's, let's randomize it again, see if we get something. All right, I kind of like that. So these colors are kind of all over the place. Um, and so we're gonna talk about a couple techniques in terms of picking colors that will work right with each other. So this top one, let's say for instance, we kind of want to go for, well, first, before we do that, uh, you can see down here we have colors and there's um, two areas where you adjust the colors essentially. So the, fir the first area that you'll want to adjust outside of these little anchor points is over here. So notice if you have two by two, three by three, um, these don't change over here. It's just the four corners of the actual gradient. 
So if we change this one right here, uh, maybe we'll come, oops, we'll come maybe just right around here. You can see how just that top left corner is being affected. So let's go like right around there. Now I'm gonna co copy this hex code right here and I'll go to the one to the top right. All right, so we're gonna copy it and now it's gonna be exactly the same. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I, I wanna see exactly where this color pointer is and then I can start to move it around in terms of adding tint, which is lightness, or shade, which is darkness, and or tone, which is getting here in this gray area. All right, so we could also maybe not even touch the location of this little picker and we can move the hue selector right here to a uh, adjacent hue. I kind of like that. All right, let's come down here at the bottom. Maybe we'll take that color code to the bottom left and we're gonna paste it right there. And then now we can perhaps change it a little further more. Now remember, it's right next to this hue, so maybe we can go the opposite direction. They're pretty similar right around there. We can adjust the lightness if we want. So really, a lot of it is a subjective preference. Let's just leave it like right around there for now. All right, and then we'll take our bottom right and let's get it back over here. All right, maybe we'll keep it in the teal area. All right, so now you could start to move these around and notice when you select it, you have little anchor points that you can drag in order to create these little arcs of color, light, or however you wanna think of them. And you can really just have fun positioning these things all over the place. And so if you pull this one down, let's see what happens there. So we're kind of creating like a, a secondary one. And notice also, when you select them, you have this little pullout where you can choose the actual color of this affected area. So unfortunately, I can't see it with this one because of the location of this. They, I think they need to fix that. Um, if we come over here, perhaps, you could see how it's affecting the color in this area. So if we get kind of close to where it was, maybe we can just boost it up. And the, the, the trick here is not to create too many different hues. You still want, I mean, it's very easy to get carried away with this stuff. So you still want there to be, notice how it's kind of following along this arc up here. That's really cool. I kind of like that. Um, it can, it can get very hectic uh, and it's very easy to screw the quality of these mesh gradients up into looking something that's like, you know, pretty gross looking. So maybe we'll just move this over here. And again, I could play around this with this for a long time just because it's fun. And again, we can come over here, maybe adjust things this way and just overall have fun with it. So again, when it comes to choosing the colors here, you wanna use adjacent colors or complementary colors. Let's click on uh, 2X here, hit generate, and we'll see what this one looks like. So let's duplicate this, we'll keep the original. I'll delete that, we'll take this and send it to back. We're gonna push it up over here and over here. We'll go ahead and choose crop in this section and just get it down to a portion where we kind of like what's happening. So let's move this off screen. And there we go. Very, very, very cool. So let's try a little bit more of a uh, different approach where we have uh, complementary hues that are worked in, which means they're, they're separated on pretty much the opposite end of the color spectrum. So what we'll do is Let's, clue, let's ah, click, not clue, let's click randomize here. Get something going. All right, that's uh, actually really cool, I like this. Uh, if you use this type of background that's light, you're gonna, use, you're gonna wanna use darker uh, type on top of it. But uh, let's, let's, let's change this up. So right here, this is actually in a greenish hue. Um, let's push it over a little bit more towards yellow. I like that a lot. Um, we'll take this one. So if we're in the yellow, and if we look at a color wheel, 
opposite is going to be purplish. So let's see how, if we can make a purple work in the upper right portion of this area. So look at that. That is so, I really liked it. It's very soft. Um, of course it's light, but if we take it down all the way to, to a lot of shade, it's not gonna look that good. So maybe we'll just keep it um, up here a little bit more. So let's uh, get this into position, maybe right around there. Now this one has its own color, so I can't see it. That's one of the things that's frustrating about this particular plugin when uh, that, that area gets overlaid. Um, coming down here, which color do we wanna make this? So again, one of the things you can also do is just move this slider very subtly. I like that. I think that looks really cool down here. Now, you may wanna play with the location of these so it's, it, it's, it's not too crazy in terms of the mesh gradients that it's creating. And again, we can take these little uh, anchors and these handles and just kinda pull them around and try to create something that looks cool. I'm actually pretty satisfied with this as is. So 2X, generate. Bring it over here. We'll delete this one, send it to back. Now, like I said, this one is on the lighter side. However, we are using pretty big type. I So when it comes to color contrast guidelines, you wanna make sure I uh, if you're on the lower end of contrast, like as in not enough contrast, that your type is big enough. So this still could be problematic. Also, one thing I don't like, see the edges are like blending in with that background right here, this gray. We can always change that as well. Um, maybe something down here. Let me move this back over here. And you can also just I uh, take a look at your contrast checker. So if we choose this, right click, choose plugins and stark check contrast, so that's a stark plugin. I, right now, if you choose both, it's not gonna work because this is a mesh gradient, so it doesn't have the data to communicate with it uh, based on what's being selected. But what you could also always do is just take this element, um, choose the eyedropper tool, kind of choose a, 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 a hue that's back there, and then select both of these, and you'll see it says 1.96 to one. So that's not even good enough for large text I uh, because you want to get to three to one. So you have some options. We can take the foreground elements and bump them up. All right, like that. And this would probably work. I don't like how large that looks here though. Um, let's just uh, get a couple lines perhaps and readjust this letting. All right, and this certainly will work as we're 10.67 to one. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot of ways to play with mesh gradients, and now it's super simple with the help of that plugin. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. You learned something new. If you did, make sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Also, subscribe, hit like, all that useless crap. <laughs> Actually, it's not useless. It helps me out, and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.